Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. I continue with the theme that I am addressing for today. This is the second prophecy that the Lord has put on my heart for today. And the title of that prophecy is called Altars. And I received it just two months ago, May the 28th, 2021. God is addressing the fact that the United States is a nation that spills a lot of blood. So many people may think, okay, certain cities in America are known for violent crime and certain parts of the country are more dicey than others in terms of people having guns and whatever. But God is not talking about that. The Lord is shining a light on the fact that America practices witchcraft, ritual murder, satanic sacrifice, and occultism. America is part of regular, daily bloodthirstiness, bloodlust, whereby people are actively hunted down. There's a whole mechanism behind the scenes with human beings as the product, human beings as the items of sale. There's flesh moving for purchase across state lines, and sometimes even being flown out of the country, especially little children. And yet the inhabitants of the nation are watching different various streaming services, living their daily lives, doing the best that they can to earn a living, raise their children, and live perhaps the best life that they think that they can live. And they're oblivious to the fact that America has been for many years, I would say for centuries, if some of the visions that I see from the Lord are even to be timelined, for centuries has been a place of death, a place where people are put to death to appease unseen gods and satanic and demonic deities. There needs to be a continual flow of blood in the country so that the power structure that exists behind the visible power structure stays in place. The father is tired of this and therefore he is making sure that this channel is one of those that will speak the truth for Americans to understand that before God ever made a move to judge the nation, God first viewed and judged the crimes that the nation commits. But if you are unaware that the nation commits these crimes, you will be unaware of why judgment is so harsh and unrelenting against the United States. So today's prophecy is two months old. It's called Altars. And let me read the banner scripture. I am in the sin series. Into my ears, says the Lord, into my ears has come the cry of my people. Into my ear comes the cry of the innocents, the many people who have died on these altars. Into my ears have come the screams of the sacrifices, the many people who have died on altars in the United States. Into my ears have come their screams and desperate cries. Therefore, America, your house is left to you desolate. Every mansion, even the fair palaces, shall be destroyed until they won't be fit to dwell in. Nobody will live in them anymore. The national burden of wickedness has finally broken your back. The sin of America is great, and it overflows the boundaries. And so I was taking part in a prayer at about 10.30 p.m. that night, and the Lord began to speak. I began to hear the voice of the Lord saying, Isaiah 5 and 9, Isaiah 5 and 9, Isaiah 5 and 9. And it became so insistent that I had to just mute the prayer and go and see what the scripture actually says. And the scripture says this, into my ears says the Lord God of hosts, truly many houses will be desolate even the great and the fair ones, and without any inhabitant. And so as I read the, the scripture, no revelation came to me immediately, but the Lord kept repeating it, so I thought perhaps let me look for some commentary. And almost all the, script, the scholars agreed, and they said this, the part that says, into my ears, mean that the Lord has heard the cry of those who suffer. So the cry of the suffering, the weak and the oppressed, and he is now standing up to avenge their suffering. The root of sin that causes the oppression of those who usually end up damned and condemned to death in the United States will be answered by the Lord. 
And then the part that says many houses will be desolate. The scholar says that this refers to the calamities that God was going to bring upon the nation at that time, Israel. The, the calamities that the Lord will bring upon the nation specifically because of its crimes. So the punishments that will come upon the nation that God was speaking to as he was telling the nation, into my ears has come the report of what you do. Those calamities would be the direct answer from God for the things that the nation was guilty of. And then the part that says, your house is left to you desolate, means that the land will become a desolation and that terrible troubles will come on account of national sins. I often make it clear on this channel that there is no way to separate yourself absolutely from the crimes that the nation is guilty of. For the reason of this, you might be someone who watches this channel and says, but I've never committed a murder. I've never killed another human being in any form, but I guarantee that God can catch you as guilty on something else. And so the response when you hear prophetic judgment is never, never, ever to try and exempt yourself because God does not like that. Daniel was a young man when Israel was taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar and marched away naked to Babylon. Yet when Daniel was promoted in Babylon and he was given a good life in the king's palace, Daniel was always crying out and mourning for his people. Daniel, I think in Daniel chapter 9, prays a very impressive prayer of heartfelt repentance and turning back to God. And there is not a single sentence in that prayer where Daniel says, forgive them, Lord, for the things my ancestors did. He says, upon me and my father's house be the iniquity of Israel. God loves people who have the intercessor spirit of Daniel or Moses. When God would get angry with Israel in the desert because of their constant abandonments of his word or constant blaming God for everything, God would always say to Moses, stand aside and let me destroy this people. And I will start again with you. Imagine an old man, but God knows that he can raise life out of a dead tree stump. So it was no problem for him. Yet Moses would always say, oh God, no, do not destroy them. Do not destroy them. Destroy me first. Or he would say, God, if you destroy them, what will be said of you that you brought this people out of captivity, but now cannot deliver them into the breakthrough you promised them? God, people will talk. Do not do this thing. And so constantly these people that were griping at Moses and judging him and condemning him had no idea how often that man was interceding behind the scenes for them because he had a peculiarly closer relationship with the Lord. And so the Lord was bringing these things to me as I was on this prayer line because Father has already been saying for a very long time that he will judge the nation for her crimes. In fact, the Lord was saying to me today that the reason many people who come to this channel get angry when they read the content or get angry when they read the blog and say, but no, you're not saying this and you're not saying that, is because he said that the words of this ministry are touching their sacred cows. A sacred cow is when you have a particular belief or a particular expectation in your heart about how you think the end times is going to go. And you believe certain things that God is going to do for you because you've been taught those things. And it's sacred in your heart and yet it has no basis in reality or it is so deeply flawed as to place you in the path of danger because you're not believing accurate information. But when you hear the accurate information coming from the mouth of God, you don't listen because it's touching your sacred cows. It's branding your sacred cow and poking it with a cattle prod and trying to tell you that perhaps what you believe and what you expect is not what you're going to get and that you might want to investigate other lines of knowledge, other lines of understanding that you then use to critique what you believe and see if they match up with what God says. And so as the Lord was saying these things to me and I was reading the commentaries, uh, God began to bring back a picture that I had been seeing for a few days. And it was a very close up view of a granite stone. 
So we all know granite is, is a very interesting texture, texture, you know, if it hasn't been polished smooth in its natural state. It's very rugged and it has little flecks of crystals in it and everything. And I was seeing this stone um, zoomed in so close that I could see the mica flecks and the crystal flecks. And I could also see a very dark and black substance in the veins of this stone. It had discoloration and cracks, a very old, worn and gray stone. And I would see these deep black veins and I would know what I was looking at because I've seen it in other types of prophecies, that particular type of dried black. But I didn't say anything. And God who knew what they were didn't say anything. And so for a time period, I would simply see the stone with those, with its natural elements and then with that one black element and then the stone would go away. But now as I was praying and the Lord began to say, Isaiah 5 and 9, I saw the stone and everything else that God wanted to reveal about it. I saw the stone and where it was located, underground in a very big and hollowed out room that had arc arches and the walls looked kind of orangey, but I think that was not their natural color. I think they just looked like that because the room was lit with torches and torches will make any place look goldy orange. There were no windows in that place. And so this time when I saw the stone, it was zoomed out and it was an altar. And there was a naked man on that altar in the process of being stabbed to death by multiple people who had curvy knives. And they were wearing satin-like robes, but not as shiny as satin, but very smooth material that had hoods. And they were holding long knives that were curvy and they were all stabbing one naked man in different places on his body as he screamed and screamed and bled so much. And when I saw that image, that's how I understood that all the little veins that I had been seeing was blood that had run on that altar again and again and dried and dried and again and dried. And that the way they cleaned that particular altar was to get piping hot boiling water and splash it in buckets over the over the altar because it not only did a type of sanitation work but it was the fastest thing to loosen the grime that would be on it human excrement human waste blood and everything else that had come out on the altar they would wash it off with buckets of boiling water but no many no matter how many times you wash off blood after a while, especially if it sinks into cracks, it dries and it turns black and you can't get it out. And so as I was looking at that blood, I understood that it was a testament of how many people have died in the pursuit of power in the service of Satan and in the pursuit and practice of very wicked illusions in the United States. And there is no end to stones like this in America. I've said many times that if you come to this channel and you have not yet watched the prophecy, Blood to Drink, then you will never understand the core of what God is saying to America about herself. That prophecy remains the most shocking thing I've ever heard in all my years of life. And with the Father speaking to me in this way, I've heard plenty. In Blood to Drink, God revealed that America eats people. People in this nation eat people. There's a niche market for the, cons for the consumption of unborn babies. So it's not that a baby is born, stillborn. I'm talking about the babies that are aborted in the early stages of development. And they have this shape. I've seen them. They have this shape and their fingers have this little webby because they haven't really been fully formed. So their fingers have this little separation in between. And their hands are so tiny and look like the fingers of frogs, of salamanders. I've seen those children up close being consumed raw and cooked by people who have more money than they know what to do with. The Lord revealed in Blood to Drink that America regularly consumes a human waste, human fecal matter, blood, menstrual blood, and human flesh that is mixed into food that is sold on a mass scale. 
Now, I'm not going to put myself in a position for people to come hunting me down, but if you just use the most minor amount of logic, I mentioned in Blood to Drink that the Lord showed me these large metal bins. They're usually shaped like a rectangle, and in those bins, I saw cow's meat mixed in with another type of meat that was very bloody and very sloppy and it was mixed in with the larger um, meat and that is where patties are prepared all of this was stuff that i was hearing for the first time god indicted america on her practice of certain things like halloween in the prophecy blood to drink and he spoke about altars in the united states i saw a map of the united states and there was something like a brick oven in every state not one but multiples and in places like new york and california there were so many the highest concentration of the altars were along the coastal parts of of the nation so that new york miami side and the washington you know la california side many many altars but there was not a single state that didn't have at least two or three and these altars also sort of i saw them like phone booths and they were ringing ring 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 and the sound that they were making was basically give us blood give us blood give us blood to drink and the lord revealed that in america people actually go out the way some people leave the house and go out and say i'm going to work or i'm meeting up with friends for a drink you leave the house with an intent people actually go out of the house at night and sometimes in broad day with daylight with the intent that i am going to snatch people because i have been told that we need a 15 year old blonde and we need a 13 year old boy and we need six children of that race and four children of that age because we have an order for them and the lord said that in the future human trafficking will become one of the highest ills that affects humanity not only in the united states but all around the world and so many people have ended their days in america on an altar these are the lord's words more people have died naked in america's history than you can ever count from the babies that they have aborted to the people that they traffic for money and murder for power, more people, I say to you, have died naked than you can ever mourn for or express. A nation that hates to wear clothing so much that even the dead die naked, stripped of all dignity, ruined, raped, molested until they come to the end of their lives. Children, women, grown men, all murdered, all sacrificed, all tied naked to altars and destroyed. I will repay because they have called me and called me and called me without an answer, but now I will answer. Now I will repay. And as the Lord was reading out these words, I saw a woman that had been raped so much in the front and in the back that her entire lower part was just sheets of blood she was on the side of the altar and she had a rope around her neck and the person who was holding the rope was off camera so basically from my perspective looking forward could not see who was holding the rope but i could see that the rope was being held by someone outside of my view and i knew that the room was full of men i could feel them but all i saw was the woman sitting on the lower steps of the altar and she was so exhausted and finished she had no more tears she had no more strength she had nothing left in her. She was sitting on the steps of the altar and she was trying to gather the last of her energy so that she could climb onto the altar because she had been instructed to climb onto the altar and be a willing sacrifice. Apparently the right that these people wanted to practice was that they couldn't take her, drag her there and force her. She had to be willing in order for their magic to work. She had to appear as part of the recipe for what they wanted as a selfless sacrifice and so nobody was rushing her or force her but i knew that this woman had been given a death order that she better do it or else and so she knew she was going to die i could feel in her i saw her from the back and i could see all the blood on her lower extremities and she was resting her head on the stone just feeling some of the coolness 
And then the Lord took the vision away. I said this in the prophecy, and I'm going to say this on camera. I hate to see these things. I hate it. I see them at the most unexpected times, and there's nothing I can do about it. And I'm not angry at the Lord for it, because I've said often that God doesn't have as many friends as we think. A friend is someone who is able to come to you and share what's on their heart. But I ask you, America, how many of you does the Lord actually count so close that he can come to you and tell you that his interest is not in the great prophetic wave and the next revival that everybody seems to be tuning into on YouTube, but that his concern are for the multiple unnamed, helpless, naked people who are being stabbed with curvy knives while their wives or mothers or sisters wonder why they haven't come back from the store yet. Is God entrusting you with what the Bible calls the true riches? Or you just imagine that you and he share a fellowship that he doesn't actually see it that way. Many of us talk at God and we never really give him a chance to take us into the deeper water. And these, my friends, are the deeper water that I, Celestial, am in even at three o'clock in the morning while the rest of you are sleeping. The Lord says that people have died naked in America, helpless, sobbing, screaming for help, and nobody came. Because the places where they kill them are dug so deep in the earth, and they're created so well to prevent echo and sound distortion, that if you do not know where this place is, you will never know what's happening. The Lord says you would never find these people. And that's why nobody finds them. Nobody helps them because nobody knows them. And I saw exhausted teenage boys that were being dragged by their hair, naked by grown men who were also naked. And I saw everyone's nakedness. So let it be understood that I'm not here talking about what I don't know. I was forced to see naked boys and naked men dragging the boys by their hair and they were falling upon those boys. And you don't need me to express what a grown man is doing to a teen boy. They're definitely not playing checkers. And these people have no weapon and the Lord was making me feel that in their heart, their blood and tears are all that they have to bring to these altars and that these places are everywhere. There is no city or state where the altars of America do not drink blood and where naked people do not die to keep the battery of America charged. Shame. Shame. Their nakedness will be repaid. It will be repaid. And so I will close here by saying that God said that if you have done this, there is no hole that you can hide and no foreign vacation that you can take. You will never escape his rage and recompense. Whether you ever know it or not, the Lord will requite you for this. There is a little bit more to this prophecy, so you can go to the master's voice. All the information for this ministry is below. Click the URL and the direct link for this prophecy will take you there for you to read and know that these things are true. Until I see you again, I am Celestial and this is the master's voice. May God bless you and keep you and bring you into all truth by his spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.